to my computer. Okay, record button is, button is on. Hello everyone, thank you so much for showing up live or watching the recording of this um, conversation we're about to have. We call them our weekly conversation about conversations about an inconvenient truth. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Politically not, incorrect. Politically okay. incorrect nutrition. Politically incorrect nutrition. I'm, am I still um, here? Can you still yes. see me? I'm going to take You're just good. one second to share this inside my uh, book group, my face, Make Peace with Fat. And while, while, while Mihaela is doing that, if you're on with us right now, uh, give us a thumbs up. Let us know you're here, please. And yes, we would and what really questions? love... Yeah. yeah, interaction. We would love some interaction from you guys. Mihaela is a, a wealth of knowledge and she is here to answer questions and I'm here for you too. But um, it's easier for us to know what to talk about. We have a topic today, a really cool and controversial topic today, but we still welcome any comments from you guys so we can help you in your own journeys. Right, Mihaela? Yes, uh, I, I want to do one more share on my, let me see if I can do this. I can't do this. That's it. That's all I can do. Uh, one share. It's, it's good enough. So let's dive into, because again, as always, look, it's not too bad today, six minute in, minutes into our scheduled time. So I feel like this is progress compared to last week. Yeah. Uh, and I want to welcome all of you watching us on Facebook, those of you watching us later on on YouTube, because uh, I and my, my um, why am I calling you Mike? <laughs> Matt, <laughs> I don't know, will uh, take this video and share it on our uh, YouTube communities as well. Please. Share with your friends. If you have any ahas, if you resonate with what we are saying if you if it's intriguing you whatever um this information does to you in hopefully a good way share it with those in your life that you believe uh can also benefit from hearing this and uh, like uh, matt already said feel free to post your questions now live or afterwards when you watch the uh, recording and um, we will come back and answer. I just realized to share actually on my page, sorry, I just remember, I have to go on my phone. That's the, the best way to, to share this. Yes, that's it. So Matt, we talk yes. about fiber today and gut health, yes? Yes. Had, I can't remember who asked about the fiber after our talk about humans not being herbivores or plant eaters. Was it Alexandra? No. Selzer? I think it was Alexandra. I, are you sure? I don't think it was someone else. It was on my page and I could not tag the person because if we're not friends on Facebook, but we can go back to that video and see. So I'm wondering if it was someone from your community. It might have been. I, I I cannot remember. I cannot remember what uh, who who the person was. But let's talk about it. Why don't we start from you know as, as basic as we can? What is fiber? Um, why are we told to eat so much of it? Excellent point to start. And by the way, I brought my book. And look I, how I did notes. And this is like, if I go and revise my book, I already <laughs> wrote down some things I need to revise in my own book. Uh, so what is fiber? Let's start right there. And I will keep going back on my book. Those of you that already have my book, um, the, the subject on fiber is under the carbohydrates 101 and it starts at page 119. So fiber is only found in plant foods. And I just want to make sure we cover some basic stuff. Just like you don't find cholesterol in plant foods, you don't find fiber in animal foods. So those are um, food 
components that belong to those two different um, systems. One is the, the biological system, we call it animal world or um, base, and the other one is the one of plant-based. So fiber belongs to the plant um, system. It is a carbohydrate, and for the human gut, it's a non-digestible carbohydrate. What does that mean? Non-digestible, it means our gut, like we talked previously, and please go back to the, the training on what are we as a classification with regards to intestinal tract biologically, herbivores, carnivores, or omnivores. So our gut is not equipped with the enzymes that are required to break down plant matter, one of which is fiber. So to back it up a little bit, we do have one enzyme that helps us extract sugar, basically glucose from plants, uh, and that is um, amylase, right? I don't wanna make it too technical, but just remember, so when we eat plants, if they were once part of our evolutionary or a part of um, makeup or survival, plants were, had a very specific role to provide us with quick energy when there was nothing else. Because our humans throughout our human history here on this planet Earth um, went from feast to famine. They had longer. We, we um, make educated guesses. We have no way of knowing 100%. But is that you? Yeah, it's me. Sorry. So we can make educated guesses uh, and, and say that humans had, they, except for, for this era where we live right now, where we are able to do conversation over devices like this, laptops and phones and use Wi-Fi. Um, humans did not have stable, regular meal times, the variety of foods and non-foods that are available to us today. So historically speaking, we had long and frequent periods of absence of food, fasting, and we had times of feasting. So uh, if there was a time when we had access to plants, we, we had to eat them or we just found, we came across berries or whatever other wild fruits or, or, or I, I would choose to say fruits and stick kind of with that because that would be the easier thing to consume without having to cook it or to alter it. Um, so we are able to break down the, the, the sugar that's found in fruits through, through amylase, and that's particularly the starch, uh, and absorb glucose, which gives us energy. Outside of that, it's difficult for us, the, as, as we are equipped with the gut, we have to take out much more from um, plant matters because of the fiber. So fiber is a non-digestible type of carbohydrate that when we consume it, it pretty much ends up in the large intestine, in the lower end of our digestive tract, intact. And there it is fermented by the microbes that live in our gut. They coexist with us. And it's important to remember that uh, because of this act of fermentation, the microbes are producing lactic acid, gases like CO2, um, ammonia, I'm pretty sure that's one of them, and short-chain fatty acids. And some of those short-chain fatty acids actually are fuel for our colon cells, colonocytes. And short chain fatty acids are also good fuel for our heart. However, in our large intestine, nutritional absorb absorption of nutrients is minimal to none. 
What, what happens in the large intestine is an exchange of water and electrolytes. And those short chain fatty acids are really more localized. They, they support the intestine. And we will come back and talk a little bit about what if we say, okay, you don't need the fiber, then what happens with how our colonocytes get their fuel? And we will talk about the uh, ketone bodies, the um, beta hydroxy butyrate, how that feeds the colonocytes. So we don't have. I mean, to bottom, bottom line, though, mm -hmm. it's a non essential nutrient for human survival. Am I, yes. am I correct on that? Yes. So we can back up and look at this in two ways. Number one, we talked about the fact that carbohydrates as a macronutrient are not essential. The body can produce its own glucose, right? That's number one thing. And the main source of carbohydrates in our human diet are plants. We do have carbohydrates in, the, in dairy, but that's not where most people get their carbohydrates from. They get it from potatoes and corn and wheat and all that. So we can look at it that way. Okay, if carbohydrates are not essential, in other words, we don't have to consume them to be healthy. Therefore, fiber that is a type of carbohydrate, it's only found in plants, is non-essential as well. Mm -hmm. So then we, that's it. We end our conversation right here, <laughs> right? right? So that's one way of looking at it. The other way is to look at it as, again, is, is found in plants, is non-digestible by the human gut, is fermented by the microbes in our gut. And now we have to see what is the role. Do we need the fiber? When fiber is okay, when fiber is not okay? And how about the amount? And how about all the health claims that we have mm -hmm. behind fiber? And um, the person that inquired about it even brought the article from um, some, some precision nutrition, I think. Yeah. And, and I talk about all those fiber benefits in my book as well. Like, and we'll go over each one of them and try to turn it upside down. Debunk, yeah, I mean, I think, I, think, I, think, I think, you know, based on our previous videos, and our talks on ancestral health and kind of going, you know, looking at Paleolithic times, looking at evolution, looking at archaeology and, and records from archaeologists. Mm -hmm. It's pretty clear cut that seasonally you, you may have uh, certain vegetables uh, available to you, but they were never in the amount of variety that people think. Like there's not a grocery store on the, the, African savanna, you know, like that you might find a mustard plant, right? You're not going to find broccoli and asparagus and kale and Swiss chard and bok choy in, in the wilderness, right? Now you might, depending on the season, you may find mm -hmm. something, but, it, but the people need to understand that vegetables, primarily the majority of vegetables you see in the grocery store, and tell me if I'm wrong, are man-made hybridized Veg vegetables that didn't never existed right well, broccoli well, is only they're mo mo uh, relatively modern food in human history modern foods Ag agriculture and even if we look at agriculture 10,000 or 8,000 years ago when it just started when humans realized that they right. can domesticate the animals they don't have to follow the herds and they can grow crops to feed those animals so so when all that happened, from that until we actually have the gardens we have today with uh, all the vegetables and growing them all year long. And then I'm even thinking to my own life experience, only what I'm, uh, uh oh, sorry, I'm having a phone call. Um, okay, I declined. So if I'm, even if I'm thinking, what, 40 years ago, okay? Uh, back in Romania where, where we had no, we didn't have the food industry that when we talked about food industry that mm -hmm. there is today, even in Romania and in, in developed industrialized countries, yeah. we ate only what we were able to grow ourselves. Right. We didn't have uh, broccoli and cauliflower and strawberries and kale and cabbage and all those foods all yeah. year long. Right. 
So, so if we want to, and we have a question here from Gloria. We'll, we'll come to your question, Gloria. If we want to kind of pull, pull some, some practical out of the, the theoretical thing about fiber that um, we may be getting into a little bit. One thing is, if you choose to eat plants, make it a matter of eating as much as possible what you find locally from yeah, someone right. that either you grow it in your own backyard if you have that or you go to a local farmer's market and you have local vendors and you ask them is this from here or you bring it from california because even that happens right uh, or, and, or how local it is. Is this a local right. farm that's, you know, within reasonable distance? And I, I don't even want to give a number what's reasonable distance. So that would be one thing. If you were to go and eat no packaged foods, right? That We talked about that previously. Forget about that. That's not, it shouldn't be cold food. But if you were to say, okay, I want to eat whole foods, I want to eat everything, then find the foods that grow locally and eat them seasonally. If right, seasonally, eat, right. If you want to eat, uh, I don't know, the green beans in the middle of the winter when they don't grow, then you have to freeze them or can them or do something so you have them. It's not because they were brought from the other side of the world where it's summer now when it's winter where you are. Right, so I hope right. this brings a point home. And the other one that I always said, even before I, I was uh, uh, an advocate of more carnivore rather than uh, omnivore way of eating, which I'm, I'm right at this point in time, when I was teaching ketogenic diets and when I wrote my book, I would always tell people in my lectures, you are paying for an expensive illusion. It really is, we are paying for an illusion thinking that we eat, need to eat the rainbow of mm -hmm. vegetables and fruits. We have to have all this variety. Otherwise, we are not healthy. That is, again, it doesn't hold. Well, it makes food. sense from, from a, from a uh, economic standpoint. Right, for the supermarket owner. That's yeah. what I, I used to say. Right. It makes sense to them. They, uh, everybody that has a vested interest in that will tell you that, yes, you need the, the variety. But right. when, again, when before in human history we had all this variety. Right. Uh, nine servings of vegetables and fruits and the, from every color of right. the spectrum. Right. That is such unrealistic to, to think and to put that kind of pressure. Like once you, you adopt that as being the truth, it yeah. becomes a struggle for parents to put food on the table for themselves yeah. and for their families. Because they have to learn how to cook. They have to learn how to do recipes. They have to learn yeah. how to measure. Oh, it's, it's go all, shopping. That, that's a whole other thing. But, but even the guilt, the, 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 the parent yeah. guilt that I'm not, my son doesn't want to eat the broccoli. Fuck it. If it does, sorry. Oh, gee, my son might watch this one. <laughs> if he doesn't eat the broccoli, don't give him the broccoli. Just give him what grows locally in season and what you eat. Yeah. So, so free yourself. That's, a, that's the number two thing. Free yourself from this thought that you have to have this crazy variety, eat the rainbow all the time. And I used to teach that, eat the rainbow. And then I kept thinking and sitting with it. And I said, it doesn't make sense. I did not grow up eating the rainbow. Not that I'm the, uh, you know, the god of food and what I did, right. that's what that should be done. But then I just started to look into where is this coming from? Well, what would you say to uh, playing devil's advocate here? What would you say to somebody who said, hey, Mich Michaela, we're, we're not cavemen and cavewomen anymore. We don't live in caves. We've evolved. If, like, even so more I so. It's so much easier. It's so much easier to, to, to have a simple, abundant life. And this download I had this morning. This morning? Or no, yeah, last night. I was talking with, with a friend. And, and he said, Man, I love cooking. I said, you know what? I love cooking too, but I love so many other things. I do not want to spend my whole evening in the kitchen yeah. figuring right. out elaborated, complicated recipes, chopping, right. rinsing, all that. Yeah. Because I love cooking and I love good food. But good food and cooking doesn't have to take most of my physical time that I have after I'm done working. Right. Yeah. Or my mental space to what to put together. It's simple. Today, I came from my run. 
I'm like, hmm, I feel, I'm kind of hungry and it'd be good to get some protein in to, to keep my muscles. I made four eggs. I mean, how difficult is it to make eggs? Right. I didn't even right. eat all four eggs because it felt, I didn't feel like eating the whole four eggs. So it, yeah, it's you're just so interesting when we free ourselves from all this. Yeah, yeah, it's liberating expectations that they're put on us it has well, to be i think a i think way. it's excessive it, it, it's the american way right it's excessive everything from portion size to going to the gym you have to work out every day every day you have to work out to your sword you can't walk and you, you got to throw up and you got to be on the you know it's all about you know killing up. yourself right <laughs> everything to the and, and that's the way we work right it's the american way that we brag on how many hours we work per week. Oh, I haven't slept in two days, right? These are <laughs> badges of honor. These are badges of honor that I think the Americans have, have, have put on themselves, the pressure we put on ourselves. And then, you know, two parents working out of the house, right? Nobody's there for the kids. We don't have time to cook. And it's like this, this, this overwhelming lifestyle that we put on ourselves. And if you look at Europe or where, or, or where you're from, Romania, um, you see people taking naps in the middle of the day and they're eating smaller meal sizes. And wow, amazing, lower rate of heart disease, lower rate of cancer, you know, because they're less stressed, you know, and they're eating better quality food, less, less food. And, and it's social, you know, we, again, it social, goes yeah. back to social, social human, real social human interaction. That's yeah. cute. Huge, but let's not diverge. Let's go back to. So, so far, what we learned that fiber is a carbohydrate, is non digestible, non essential. But now, is there any role? So, we hear a lot about the role of the gut flora, right? Probiotics, prebiotics. And that's the question that Gloria has. Um, I know you're going to talk about gut health. What is the truth about prebiotics and probiotics? So, let's define the terms. Prebiotics are the food for the probiotics. Probiotics are the microbes that live inside our gut. Um, we, we tend to say that they're good and bad, but our gut flora always has. They're all, they're all good, but in different ratios, they can have a negative effect. I don't know if that makes sense. Like you have a Shirikia coli in your gut or you have Clostridium or you even have a, a Helicobacter pylori, H. pylori, like the people uh, know it in the United States. If they are in the right number in rapport to other microbes that you have in your even viruses and yeast and all that, they're okay. The problem is when they outgrow a number, the good one, then they, their effects, their toxins, what they release, it becomes at a health cost to, cost to us. So there is a truth and we don't know. I feel like although there is more research into the gut flora and its role, uh, and our human gut definitely has its uh, our human health definitely has its roots in, our, in the state of our gut. I feel like we still don't know exactly what, what's the, the, the role and the, what's this balanced gut flora mm -hmm. because, yeah. and I'm going to say, based on what we eat, nevertheless, we are changing the, the let's call it composition. I think it's, the term is diversity the mm -hmm. diversity that we have in our gut, this, the types of microbes and viruses and even parasites and yeast that live in symbiotic relationship with us, hopefully, right? Mm -hmm. So when we eat high sugary foods, high starch foods, artificial sweetener, we support the growth of a certain kind of gut microbes mm -hmm. or, or yeah, I guess microbes will, will kind of include everything. I'm trying to find for a word that will encompass all of this. When we eat a, a um, higher fiber diet that doesn't include starch, it's more like a ketogenic diet, right? That we get the fibers from the green vegetables, like the summer vegetables, not the starches as much. We have a different kind of gut flora. Mm -hmm. What happens when we take out all the fiber? 
we well, thought you get, con you get constipated right we thought that that would be almost uh incom <laughs> incompatible with with life or with health and it turns out that is not the truth we now begin to support the growth of the microbes that don't need fiber or starches or sugar or anything like that and that's when we see the most healing in our gut interestingly mm. enough and then of course i should say that um uh with regards to maybe we should we should define fiber i hope this answers the question prebiotics are the fibers basically the fibers we get from vegetables and the sugars that feed our gut microbes, which the good ones are labeled under the probiotics. And you know, you can purchase probiotics from- Why would one. someone need to be taking a probiotic? Is that after a, a bout of antibiotics that they may have been right, taking from, uh, right. from a sickness? Right, So supplement in this, The supplement in this industry is a, probably a million dollar industry, billion dollar industry, why? are some people being told to take probiotics on a daily basis and should they? So even I used to prescri prescribe to recommend probiotics. And even now, if I have clients that continue to eat plants and most of them would eat like the ketogenic kind, GAPS ketogenic, yeah. so low carb, I would recommend probiotics simply because again, any fiber we eat, it doesn't only feed the, the microbes that are m primarily beneficial to us. It feeds, so, so to speak, the good and the bad ones. So if you already have a, other than the best gut flora, because you didn't inherit a good one, because you took, take many antibiotics over the course of mm -hmm. your life, because you are exposed to chlorine in the water because of stress because of the mm -hmm. birth control pill because of the prednisone because of whatever so many so this this gut flora is, is a very delicate um uh, organism think of it as an organ that is very susceptible very much affected by everything that happens in our insights right yeah so many people have this fine balance thrown off where more more yeast grows or more of the uh, bad microorganisms and produce toxins in our system and then as we talked last week the toxins on the context of a porous uh, gut that lost its uh, healthy integrity how would, how would they will absorb Mihaela, toxins. how would these people know if they're having that gut dysbiosis is it gut distension is it flatulence is it just discomfort Right. Um, is it poor immune system function? What, it, what, what would you be your advice on that? It, it can manifest in all of the above. Uh, you, you may have gut manifestations, like you said, with, with gas, with burping, skin issues, mood issues, uh, immune system gets compromised, or you have allergies and asthma and uh, you're susceptible to everything that, uh, you know, blows up in the air or you have full-blown autoimmunity. That's a state of, of gut, gut imbalance, dysbiosis. That's the, the term. Um, so it's, it's quite common. Leaky gut and, and dysbiosis are very common in our modern living because of, again, it, because of the nature of our food it goes back to what we eat and lifestyle in general so um wow i was going somewhere with the probiotic uh explanation I'm sorry. so so yes going to so for my clients for instance just to say right now at this moment in time for the last year and 15 months since i excluded plants i would say 95 percent five percent of the time and a whole year i had some form of plants I do not take probiotics. I do not take any supplement actually. And I don't feel like I need one. Uh, but I used to take probiotics and I fermented foods and I ate fermented foods because mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that the good guys are in substantial amount in my gut. 
So for my clients that still continue to eat plants, I may recommend them to take probiotics or to eat fermented foods for mm. that very reason. Because yeah. everything we eat, again, will affect... Uh, everything we eat and comes with fiber or sugar and such will affect the growth of, of the microbes in our gut. So to make sure we keep in good check the good ones, we can add this, the probiotic supplement and better yet, the fermented foods like the sauerkraut or the kimchi, or I used to ferment cashew mm -hmm. to make cashew cream cheese, yogurt for those that are consuming uh, dairy products. So now I want to just make a, a a juxtaposition, a parallel to this. So if you choose not to have any plants, now you, you support your gut again in a, at many layers because when you take out all that prebiotic mm -hmm. that feeds the, the microbes, it feeds, again, it feeds the good and the bad. It will starve the bad and your gut will just be colonized by the ones that are the most benign, beneficial, basically. I almost feel like the, the state of our gut flora, the way it is today when we eat this mixed diet with predominant, with high fiber, it's yeah. greatly influenced and thrown off balance because of the exact fiber and sugars mm -hmm. and artificial sweetness that we have. Right. So you can look at a temporary complete elimination of all fibers to acting as a reset. Can you reset your gut integrity, gut health, gut flora? Yeah. How long does it take? You will figure out, but more than a month, <laughs> minimum a month. Yeah. And, and I just wanted to bring this one uh, because I feel like people are not talking enough about this. There is a clinic in Hungary, it's called Paleo Medicina, that for the last gosh, maybe 10 years, they work with this nutritional therapy. It's called Keto, um, Paleo, Keto, KP, Keto pa Paleo Foods. And it's basically a keto carnivores. It's a certain ratio between the fat and protein we eat. I'm not going to get into the details of that. But long story short, they are reversing autoimmunity of any way, shape, or form, even cancer. They have re case study reports. I've seen cancer. it. I've seen this video Elimin yes. by eliminating fiber and all plant foods. All plant food, but not only that. So it's uh, Dr. Sofia and uh, they're Hungarians. Sofia and I can't think of the guy's name. Anyway, what they do, this is the cool thing because we talked last week about leaky gut and how do we know we have leaky gut? It can be measured. So they develop a test where you and, and they act what they do they measure the state of the gut the gut health how leaky the gut is before they intervene with this nutritional therapy and at at certain intervals of time afterwards and within 30 days of this nutritional approach that's why i said at the minimum 30 days they see healing and sealing of the gut lining based on uh, this hyperpermeability test so those of you that want to learn more, or you, want to, you have a severe autoimmune conditions, one mm -hmm. or more, take a trip to Hungary and have a, a check with them because their work is fabulous. So that's how we know that... This goes, against, this goes against everything. I know, you know but I mean, what do we the, want? We want people to heal. We want to make it I'm simple. You. But you and don't... That, like, it, it's, so, it's so against our everything we've been conditioned to learn like when it comes to getting healthy at all like everybody knows you need to eat more fiber i saw it yesterday in a commercial where it said um you know all the cereals they always have to say high fiber yeah you know getting high fiber and people will always say like there's no cancer healing therapy out there that doesn't go plant-based which, you know, right. for cancer, some people do have results when they do like the Gershon therapy with, right. I don't know, a gazillion of coffee enemas a day and organic yeah. and, and starve because you starve. Again, plants are starving us. If you go and live on plants alone, you can't get nourishment. So you starve yourself. So you starve the cancer too. But 
it, there are other ways to do it. It doesn't have to be that way. But, yeah. but again, whatever works, the person has to believe in the approach they do. Let's right. come back to our fiber thing. So, so consider that el doing a, a, an elimination of this nature where you eat no plants for a period of time as a reset of your gut health, gut integrity, and gut flora balance. Mm -hmm. And see what happens. Now, uh, so that's kind of what I wanted to say with regards to pro prebiotics and probiotics. Should we get into the glucose absorption, cholesterol and fat, slowing gastric emptying? Uh, I don't think, I think we need to keep time. this simple because I know what people are thinking watching this, right? And you get this question, I get this question. Clients ask me this question too when we, when we tell them, hey, that you're, you're, you're having some sort of gut dysbiosis, something's not working well, you're not digesting food properly, we need you to eliminate certain foods from your diet and it may be fiber or, or vegetables in and in of itself. The first question you get is, Constipation. how do you poop? How okay, so let's talk about that. It's my, favorite, it's my favorite topic. And you probably know that's what got me into this mess, I call it, <laughs> <laughs> the nutrition world. That's my yeah. very own gut and my lifelong constipation. Yes, so tell let me your see story. I, yeah, let me see if I can keep it short. So I was 20 years, so I don't have much recollection before 20 years old, how my life was. I just know that they used to call me. Uh, they, there's a name in Romania. I was farting all the time. <laughs> That's all I remember as a kid. And they would always, my, my family, my friends would make fun of me that I would always fart. <laughs> okay, I can't believe I'm saying this out loud, but it, this is what it was. So my name was Beshinella. <laughs> yeah. my, 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 uh, when they were teasing me. Okay, so when I was 20 years old, I was in veterinary school. And I, that's why I always say it's about knowledge, giving you power, making you aware of things. So that was the first time I really understood gut, anatomy, and digestion, all that. And, and mm. again, comparative anatomy from series to series, and bam, human. And I'm like, really? Humans? They, they poop every day and this and that? And I... I realized that I was constipated. I did not, I would not have a bowel movement for seven to 10 days. That, that would be, yeah. and I would be nauseous and don't feel good. And so that's when I, I become aware, I became aware that something was wrong with my gut, but I was led to believe that if we don't poop every day, multiple times a day, we develop colon, colon cancer, right? So that was my fear and my driving force, not to get colon cancer. So I went and I checked and the diagnosis I received was you have an uh, anatomical problem. You were born with a very large, large intestine that's also sluggish, like motility was low. So I had like this bag that was holding a lot of stuff before it was ready to be taken out. And I was offered to do surgery. Imagine, mm. 20 years old, cut, ah, you're, you're, I, I will never forget, the doctor said, some people are born with a big nose, you were born with a big colon, and you should be happy because it doesn't show on your face. Wow. <laughs> Can you believe it? And easy fix, we go in, we make it small, you, you're just like everybody else. I'm like, really? It just did not sit well with me. So that's when I became, you can call it obsessed, to figuring out, how I'm going to eat, because obviously it had something to do with food, right? So I would not have to have surgery. Don't rely on laxatives, which I, I had previously. I was taking laxatives. That I recall having to take laxatives as a kid. My mom would give me laxatives every so often, so I would go. Uh, and just have, you know, a normal life like everybody else, not get cancer. That was the fear in there. So that's when I began the high fiber search from from high fiber like um, wheat bran which is the most harsh fiber you can get all the way to oat bran and then long story short i became raw vegan because the animal foods would give me cancer and they were bad for me and i wanted to eat clean again cancer prevention like the whole nine yards that everybody yeah, you fell for it. are a health conscious person 
and they do things that are good for the environment will say it's the plant way of eat, uh, of going eating yep only to be on this journey of high fiber plant based eating for 10 years and to see a slow and steady decline in my health yeah. Mind you, I was a healthy girl. I, I never been in a hospital until that day when I self-checked myself to see what's going on in my gut. Healthy and you, person. And you, you were doing everything right. I was doing everything right, but slow. So now I'm starting to... Oh, is, is the sound okay? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm starting to actually get sick. I turn yellow. Like I was yellow. And everybody would be like, you eat too many carrots. I wasn't even eating carrots, but I was raw vegan. I was eating all the greens you could think of in any yeah. shape, way, or form. But I have this, uh, which I never even tested, but later on I learned that I have this SNP, this genetic um, mutation where I cannot convert beta-carotene, which is the plant-based vitamin A, into vitamin A. So it was all in my skin <laughs> instead of being converting to vitamin A and, and being in my system, taking care of, of my cells, right? So is that that you had jaundice? Not the eyes, the skin. I, like you look at my palms, now okay. they are like white, pinkish. I was yeah. yellow. Okay. That was one thing. My thyroid, uh, I, start, I was cold all the time. Constipation never resolved. Dry skin. Uh, I remember checking my thyroid, having ultrasound and doing tests for thyroid, especially because I was exposed to Chernobyl uh, back in Romania when, when the Chernobyl uh, exploded. So I went to the doctor to check myself to see why I was not going well. So, oh, maybe it's the thyroid. Maybe you, you have something going on because you were uh, in Chernobyl. Let's test that. So long story short, everything was going downhill, gut including. So... I developed dysbiosis. I think, and again, I have not done, I'm not so crazy about testing as much as doing something that I want to see results from it. Because, okay, right. I test, what am I going to do different? I'm going to do the same thing. So most likely small intestinal bacterial overgrowth based on the symptoms. Insufficient hydrochloric acid in my stomach, not digesting food, seeing in my poop, whatever I would mm -hmm. go to the bathroom, all the fiber, all the plants, the nuts, the vet, the salads, what I would eat, they would be in my poop. So it did not solve my constipation problem. I just got sicker and sicker, uh, kind of slowly, you know, it wasn't like to put me in bed so I couldn't move. It took 10 years. Not not to say that when I was pregnant with my son, I, I got gestational diabetes, which you would not have expected from a person that was healthy and fit, did not mm -hmm. gain excess weight. But I attribute that to my high carb intake for all these yeah. 10 years. I yeah. just taxed my pancreas. I, I, I may have a weak link in there, a predisposition towards diabetes, like passed on uh, from my uh, family. And the way I was eating it just didn't help not lead to that. So that was a big wake-up call for me. So now between having to deal with checking my blood glucose and my gut was a wreck and my mood. So those were three bad things that I experienced. I finally woke up. You know, when, when you're sick enough, you, you ask for answers. Like, what do I need? And that's when I learned about the GAPS nutritional protocol. I read the book. I applied for training with Dr. Natasha. I remember I went to the training in Chicago. I took my son with me because I was still nursing him. And that was the day after listening. She, if, for those of you that don't know Dr. Natasha, so encourage you to, to search and watch some of her YouTube. She is so down to common sense. She's a very educated person. Uh, neurologist uh, with um, postgraduate trainings in nutrition, revolutionary work into the gut health and autism and everything else. Yeah. And, and she, I can say that she saved my life by me training with her and learning about the, the gut, the GAPS protocol, the importance of mm -hmm. animal food and nourishing us and forgetting about plants. And that was the day when I said, you know what? I'm 
I'm no longer willing to put up with this sickness for some idea that plants are at any level supporting me in any way. Right. And by and I think me that's not what... eating animals, uh, I help anybody. Yeah, I mean, it's the definition of insanity. Like, I, how long do you continue to do everything that's correct, that's supposed to be keeping you healthy, and it's right, doing the opposite? Right, yeah. And that's our, yeah. that's our message, I think, to a lot of people out there is some of the things such as, you know, low fat diets or low animal pri vegan type diet. Mm -hmm. So I have to say that uh, high carbohydrate, high vegetable content, high fiber like diets could be causing could be causing a problem. I have to say something. For, for some, everybody has their own threshold. And that's something mm -hmm. for people yeah. to try to figure out how much are they willing to ignore what they see or what yeah. other people around them tell them that they see mm -hmm. when they see them before they're willing to take action. Luckily, I had the low threshold because I was always healthy and I always had energy and I felt good. I had low threshold for what it meant not to feel good. Right. But it's easy to, to just accept again, oh, I'm getting older. Oh, I'm right. hitting menopause. It's, it's normal that I will gain the weight and right. I will be more constipated or maybe my thyroid will not work so well because, you know, that's what happens. And, and if, that, if you read what happens to a woman when estrogen goes low and she gets into menopause and you look and you find five friends, five friends around you that had the, they fit the exact description, guess what? You're going to internalize that as the truth right. and you are Normal. going to live up to that expectation. But yeah. what if you look at that and you say, mm -mm, that's not the way I'm going to roll. And you try to find five people that did not fit that description. They beat the odds and you follow their, into their you, you take that as your mm -hmm. uh, uh, belief because what the mind believes the body will achieve. You will act according to your thoughts. Right. So, so lessons. Don't ignore the signs that you get from your body. They may be subtle or they may be brutal, but right. don't ignore them. And the assessment form that I'm, I'm using, it's like looking at the signs that your body gives you. So those of you yeah. that want to, to go through that assessment, definitely comment below and, or better message me directly because it's easier with your email address and I will send it to you. But that's one way to, to see what the body is, the signs you receive. Friends might tell you, you don't look too good. What's, are you okay? Um, you may feel, but you, you want to resist it. No, don't resist it. Don't give yourself reasons for why you would not take actions on behalf of your body for your yeah. own good. Yeah, so that's the story. I, I oh, being, oh, oh, but we didn't answer. Yeah. <laughs> I said my story. We didn't answer about constipation. <laughs> Do we need fiber not to be constipated? <laughs> that was yeah, the question. What is, so what is, what is constipation? Let's define it. So according to, well, we should have put the definition out because I really don't like to give my own definitions, but it's expected at least one bowel movement a day. That would be considered normal for humans. And we should say that is because what we know of normal for humans is for, from our modern times where we eat galore uh, of vegetables, right? So... Somebody would say, if I don't go to the bathroom every day, I'm constipated. Somebody would say, if I don't go three times a day, I'm constipated. Yeah. But the, the idea is that what goes in should go out. Now, let's bring the fiber in. Again, fiber is non-digestible. Some of it gets fermented. We have soluble and insoluble fiber. The soluble fiber is the one that's more fermentive. The insoluble one is the more, more like a brush that whoops, swipes through things through. Both will give bulk. So when some, and, and people respond different to fiber. It's not like one response, uniform response. Some people, uh, let's say you have diarrhea. If you add some soluble fiber, like chia seeds, for example, grinded chia seeds or psyllium, it will bind to that excess water that's in your large intestine and will help you form a stool and will reduce the frequency of stools and the, the watery consistency, right? So you can say, oh, that's a good thing, which could be temporary, right? Some people that, especially with ulcerated gut, irritable syn gut syndrome, things like mm -hmm. that, 
any fiber and especially the insoluble fiber, like the one that comes with wheat bran or oat bran, any bran, lignin, like from uh, flaxseed. Psyllium uh, husk. Psyllium is more soluble. Um, the insoluble is the cellulose, the, the cell wall of plants. So that will actually trigger more diarrhea. It's just the way I explain it in my book is imagine that insoluble fiber and the best example would be the wheat bran because it's, it's like, like a, a brush and I compare it with a brush. So let's say okay. your gut has ulcerations. It's like wounds. You have wounds on your skin, maybe even an eczema. It doesn't have to be like deep wound, but your skin is almost raw. And you take a brush, even the softest brush, and you go, boop, 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 boop. is that good for your skin? Will that do any good to your skin? No, it's painful. So that's what happens when we have an ulcerated, irritated gut, and we add more fiber in, we just scrub it. We cause more irritation, mm, and then it yeah. can lead to more diarrhea and pain and all that. So the bottom line is, if you have any of those, you have too many stools in a day, large, large matter, um, you're not necessarily good. Do a stool analysis in that case. Do you, and, and even look at your stool. Do you pass undigested food in there? Mm -hmm. Is it smelling? How much gas do you pass? How quick you can do a gastric transit time to see how fast the food yeah. goes through you. You don't want it to go too fast because you want to absorb nutrients. Right. So fiber really uh, does not help one resolve their gut issues, whether it's diarrhea or constipation. And in my case, definitely, maybe I should say what happened finally in my case. So when I went GAPS, ketogenic diet, I started to see improvement in my health overall. Like, oh my gosh, day, uh, night to day. But I still did not have resolved my gut issues 100%. I was still constipated, but not so severe. So I, now I had less fiber, right? So I was able to manage my bowel movements, taking vitamin C and uh, magnesium, high doses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To pull more, basically what they do, they help me pull more water into my large intestine so I could pass stools. But it's like a hit and miss. Sometimes it's diarrhea, sometimes it's yeah. normal. So it's not an easy way of managing, but way better than before. However, last, not last year, 2017, in November, no, uh, 18, we are in 20 now, right? So November of 2018, I finally had the revelation, you know, like things, have, at one point we, we get to see what we need to see. You can't yeah. see it before you're ready. I was ready for this. So I said, how interesting. I've tried everything except for taking out all the fiber. I just, I just said, I'm going to give this a try. I mean, what am I going to lose? Yeah. And to my pleasant surprise and mind yeah. blowing and uh, everything shattering, <laughs> I resolve my constipation, my long life constipation that I was told I can never do it because I was born defective. Yeah. So I feel like I'm here to give power to people. You can heal, never give up. Your body can heal. Just be willing to see and hear what you need to see and hear right. and go do it. And listen to your body. Yep. Tr tr trust your intuitions, yeah. So no plants, no fiber, and I have bowel movements. And I have to say, I, I log them. As this may sound crazy, for 15 <laughs> months every day, I do a tick box to see if I had a bowel movement. And I would go like every day, every day, every day, and then maybe skip a day or two. Yeah. And, and, and now? Yeah. So I'm going almost I'm like every day. And then let's say I go five days and then one or two days, no. Yeah. And let me say this, when you don't eat fiber, the volume of your stool mm -hmm. is Small. little, is you don't have the, 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 the volume. What gives right. volume to our stool is the fiber. Yeah. 
Right. So it will be an adaptation period. Some people actually even get diarrhea at first. Right. Because yeah. again, the colon, it has to ad adjust, pulls out that water to take care of the fiber that's in the gut. And yeah. all of a sudden there's no fiber, your colon still pulls out lots of, in, 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 I should say in, pulls inside lots of water. So you may even have diarrhea. In my case, it helped me go, finally. Yeah. No, not having to deal with all that rubbish that my body yeah. didn't want it. So. Well, it's so funny, it, it, in the vegan community, it, it's almost like a badge of honor to, to use the bathroom Yes, I know. I used to think that too. Times a day. And the yeah. reason why that is, is because their body can't digest it and it's trying to eliminate it, trying to get rid of it. Where in their defense, they would say that animal foods, like we have less bowel movements and it's because the, the, your body's trying to, like, because it, it means it's bad for you. It means that, that no, the body's trying to extract nutrients Takes from it. Takes what it needs and it's very little right. that is left to, to be excreted, eliminated. Right. Yep. So that's, uh, that's the story on fiber. Did we cover everything? So we, we, we learned that, that fiber is a carbohydrate, is non-digestible. We already know that carbs by, by, as a macronutrient are not essential, therefore we don't need them, therefore probably we don't need fiber. We learned that if you are not healthy, like 100%, and I said that in my post, and you shared that post, thank you so much for that, if, if you are worried about coronavirus, if you have anxiety, if you have uh, ulcerative colitis, if you have diabetes, if you have eczema, if you have depression, if you have anything that's not like um, awesome every day with energy, with vitality, with good skin, with all of that, mm -hmm. think your gut. That's yeah. the root of the problem. So if you want to reverse anything, you have to fix your gut. Because and what's there? What's in the gut? Explain to people that the immune system lives where? There's one cell, um, cell line away from. But that's where we get the nutrients. So to get yeah. nutrients, you have to have a healthy, strong uh, gut. Yeah. And you have to eat the right food. So yeah. eat according to our biological design. What yeah. are the most nourishing nutrient dense food? Animal foods with their own natural fat. Right. And uh, to heal and, and plants you look my shirt. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it lasts most. I'm still waiting for mine. That's, and we have to talk about it mostly fats and, and meat. Um, so don't be afraid to, to take out fiber. It's not essential. You will reset your gut and you will figure out after you reset if you need the fiber, how much, how often. Your body will let you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to yep. tell you how much. Matt will not tell you how much. You will know. Just trust your body. Yeah. It has everything it needs. It's pre-programmed to thrive, not only to yeah. survive. You've got to work with your body. And I still want to feel like before we end, I want to say how simple this is. I, yeah. Maybe we talk about this next time, but briefly. And that's why I tell people, you don't need cookbooks. Sorry for all the people that have cookbooks out there. Yeah, and I have no. a school of cooking, go figure. Yeah. <laughs> I have a school of cooking. Really, it's so simple. You put something in the oven, food is done. You make some eggs, food is done. I mean, who right. doesn't know how to do that? You put a chunk of meat in the crock pot, food is done. So when you it's go shopping, simple. it's pretty easy. Bam, I have to have two, three kinds of meat and I'm good. You don't have to chop, you don't have to peel, you don't have to triple yeah. wash. You yeah. don't have to figure out what vegetable goes with what spice and mm -hmm. with what da 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 None you don't have to fer you don't have to ferment anything. You don't have to soak anything. It's just simple, guys. It really, truly becomes like breathing. So when I say eating is as simple and effortless as breathing, it really does become. Yeah. And I can hear everybody here now saying, "Oh, that must be so boring." <laughs> yeah. To eat only meat. So. You want to hear more? Well, it's not only meat because you're, yeah. you eat eggs. Yeah, but it's I all salt. It's I'm all salt. I'm okay. I'm okay with cheese. 
I do okay with dairy. Now, some people may not be able yeah, but it's be no okay with dairy. No sweet, there's no so sour, right. there's no, it's just, you know, and the- But that's the, the, but as you know, people are addicted. They are addicted to those things. And once you take them out for a while, you, your body doesn't crave them anymore. 100% true, 100%. And I, again, it starts here. Yep. If you think that's boring, it's going to be boring. I, had, yeah. I hate to bring it to you. It's what you think. And I'm going to give you one human example. And that's you. When you were a newborn, you were not bored with the same old, boring mother's milk every day for at least six months of your life. Yeah. You took it like a yeah. sucker <laughs> and it made yeah. you grow. No variety. And you didn't no say, oh, whatsoever. the milk tastes the same. Well, you couldn't speak, but... If you, you thought it was boring or not serving you, you would have not yeah. eat it, drink yeah. it, whatever. <laughs> so do not tell me it's boring. Yeah. <laughs> You've done it. Do yeah, it you don't need months. variety. <laughs> you don't need variety. And, and once you get to the point where you're thinking about that we're eating for, to fuel the human body, right? Oh, yeah. Then it's, it's completely reshifting of, of the mind. It That's does. what it is. It it's does. fuel and nourishment. Yeah. So the way I think is, what is the food? I can eat that takes the least amount of time to prepare, mm -hmm. gives me the most fuel and nourishment. So I don't have to think about eating for another right. eight hours or 16 hours. Right, exactly. That's how you think. And then you start to live life. Then you, right. all of a sudden you have more time and energy to do so many other things that you love yep. doing. Yep. Oh, people say, oh, but I love cooking. Cook it's liberating. You love cooking, but there are so yeah. many other things you love. I'm sure you love to do. Maybe you love to play an instrument. Maybe you love to take dance yeah. lessons. Maybe you love to spend more time with your kids playing on the floor. Maybe you make you love to spend more time in bed with your partner. Yeah. I don't know. There are other things in life that I'm sure you love maybe right. more than cooking. So right. don't use that as an excuse. Oh, I won't be able to make my favorite meal. When you want a super fancy meal, you go to a fancy restaurant. Right. <laughs> anyway. No, I agree. I agree. So that's my download for today. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? I feel like we Let's didn't see. ask our listeners, but anybody watching the recording, please come and tell us what, how this lands with you. I know it's not easy to swallow <laughs> information. Yeah, it's scary. It can be but scary. But it's again, it's, it's up here. We need to take our educated mind out of the picture. And just Question. trust our gut. You want to add anything, Matt? No. I mean, I, I, I got a lot out of that, like I always do. Um, you know, it's one of those things you try to tell people that, um, you know, sometimes you've got to question, question the authority, question what you've been taught. And Every, sometimes, I, question, I question everything. Yeah. If I mean, most me, people... No, I was just saying that a lot of the stuff we're telling people is so out there and, and, and politically incorrect. But yes. once again, like we, you have to ask yourself, are you truly healthy? Are you uh, uh, lying to yourself thinking that you're that and accepting mediocrity um, and, and, and be really That's honest. Standard. I, yeah. Is, is, are you really as healthy have you, or, uh, as you think you are? Right. And and if if someone's happy with they, where they are in life, this is not for you. Right. We are talking to those of you that want more, want it all. I I say it on my uh, Facebook profile, I'm I'm a high performance coach for the woman that wants it all. Do not hold back. If you want it yeah. all then just go for it. Yeah. It's, it's you. It's where you set the standard. What are you willing to believe or dream? Yeah. Who is there to tell you that you cannot do that? You come to that conclusion. Yeah, most people don't, don't know what real health feels like. They don't know they what, had what, a nice what feeling conversation. good is. Today I had a nice conversation with um, a girl. She said... Now that you, you get to taste life, I love that, to yeah. taste life. Who wants to taste life? I like that. That's a good <laughs> shirt too. Yeah. Huh? Isn't that a good one? Good taste life. Yeah. 
instead of tasting food, which okay, yeah. it's good, but don't make the life all your life about food. Just taste life. Yeah. What is life here to give you and you to give to those around? Yeah, you? yeah. Isn't that a good one? Yeah, look at the passion. Look at the passion <laughs> you're, that you're, that's, that I'm seeing out of you right now. I hope people can see that. Yes, me too. <laughs> so that's life. our our fiber thing. Oh, so now I'm just going to bring three more things. We said we know we it's it's um, pretty much evidence based that fiber will help us absorb less sugar from the carby foods we eat. It will help us eliminate more of the cholesterol rather than yeah. absorb it. It will help us, uh, will delay gastric emptying, meaning the food stays longer in the stomach so we are not hungry. Satiate, soon. yeah. It Helps also, the in, right, insoluble fiber will speed up transit time if we need to, to poop more uh, to get rid of toxins, for example. All, all this become absolutely irrelevant when you take all plants out. Because guess what? There's no carbs you have to worry about. Right. Cholesterol is not a problem. Inflammation is a problem, which is right. driven by carbs. Yeah. And, and great majority and vegetable oils. So we have to clean up the oils. We should talk about that too. Um, you don't need to delay or speed up your transit time. You just let your gut do its job. You give the nourishing mm -hmm. food and your body will take as long or as little as it needs to absorb what right. it needs to absorb. So yeah. all these so-called perceived um, fiber benefits they become irrelevant yeah i hope this makes sense guys now if you choose to do the ketogenic diet and fabulous it's a great first step from like eating you know normal ketogenic is great then you want to get your you know variety whatever plants in season you eat but then if that's not enough you want more then consider the ultimate elimination diet and see what it does for you yeah and show them your shirt. Show them your shirt. The, oh, the, my that's shirt. That's the ultimate. My that's the ultimate uh, Okay, let's get feedback. Right can, you, can you read it or it shows backwards? In my oh, case, it, it shows good. backwards. Yeah, so I'm wondering if I should, because I designed this. This is my quote. So I looked at Michael Pollan. I, most of you probably uh, are familiar with his work. And he wrote the book, The Omnivore's Dilemma. And his conclusion was, uh, as humans, we have to eat less, mostly plants. So... I was vegetarian when he came up with that and I said, yes, he's right about that. <laughs> now I reconsider my, my um, statement to <laughs> omnivore's dilemma and I say eat less because naturally you will eat less, guys. You just don't have, you're nourished. You just eat based on, like just like the, the gas tank, it tells you when the gas is low, you need to add gas in your tank. Same thing with you. You're not going to eat because the, you don't put gas in your car at the gas station because they are on your way like you do right. with food right it, it just self-regulates but it's mostly fats because that becomes our fuel and meats maybe i should put plural and maybe do you think i should make it smaller so it doesn't go like the whole shirt i'm sure you can get a, like a graphic designer to come up with a different i like it but yeah maybe there's a better logo for it because i created this one I created yeah. and I, I sent it to print as a test to see yeah. how I like it. And I feel like it's a big What do you deal. guys think? What do you guys yeah, think Yeah, let there? us you know. She, and would you wear yeah. one like this? Or would what you would like you one? want on your shirt? Yeah. <laughs> I want to create a line with, with yeah. things like that that empowers people to yeah. own their... To taste life. Oh, 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 sorry. That's my... Uh, uh oh, I don't know how to... I think my, uh, it was on the headset. They probably <laughs> ran out of bed. You know, because like, you know, Saladino says like, live, live life radically, right? Mm -hmm. That's like tasting life. Like, do you want to, oh, are you yes, accepting? I'm going to do one, taste life. Now that you no, taste no, I'm, life. No, I'm going to use that. You do? I'm going to use that now. Oh, we all use it. We, I mean, we are a team. <laughs> you and I are like soulmates. <laughs> I don't know how we, <laughs> we didn't meet after this point, but I know. I know. Team. We are on the same page, everything. When, you, when I saw the, the chemtrail picture, I'm like, oh, no, oh, yeah. I can't believe he, he, he talks about chemtrails. I, I don't yeah. talk about because most people think that I'm not, which we think in many other aspects. Yeah. But yeah chemtrails are pretty real. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, no, we don't go there now. That's another conversation. Another one. We're going to lose listeners. So, so Matt, I want to tease you for next week. 
Okay. I want us to talk about exercise, and you're okay. the expert in that. All right. And when exercise is not enough, and how we do the exercise with the food together, so we see results out of our efforts. Yeah, I love it. I'm telling you, I go to the gym and I see people working out hard. Yeah. And one year later, they work just as hard. I don't see anything on their body. And they look the same. The same. And I feel bad because they yeah. put an effort and they are beating on the wrong horse. Yeah, I discouraging. mean, exercise is good, but we need to couple it with the food. So next week, we'll talk about exercise and then maybe we'll talk you about where the food fits in. And great let us know if you're great, excited great, about this topic. Idea. Yeah. What questions you have. And let's do a plug-in. How do you help people? Where do they find you? And then I'll do my plug-in and then we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, PrimalFitMiami.com. I'm uh, Matt Pack on Facebook. And you can find me at PrimalFitMiami on Instagram. How do you help people? I help people Gym? become... Yeah, I mostly I, I do online some online coaching, uh, mm -hmm. but mostly in person at the gym, awesome. um, helping busy professionals become better versions of themselves. That's it. If you're a busy professional and you're in Miami, definitely you want to check uh, Matt's yeah. gym if you want to work with him on the online space. And I can see us pretty soon coming up with a, with a virtual program. Yeah. Where we're going to help people with, with all of this so they can actually take it from like, oh, bucket yeah. load of information to what do i do each day how do i do it yeah yeah but meanwhile in the meanwhile we'll continue our weekly conversations in which will be wednesdays yeah we already lock it in yes, wednesdays 11 30 yes yes i think so let us know topics yeah. and questions that you guys would like yeah. answered what would you if like you to enjoy learn more this, about yeah what do you want us to talk about i know they get long but you know what this is not the one you sit down unless you want to take notes which yeah. i don't know if it's anything to take notes of as much as is to soak it into your mind um, and you can do this as you cook as you walk as you uh clean the house you don't have to sit in one places so just don't say oh this is so long i don't have time for it make time yeah, watch for yourself. it watch it later watch it later you know i mean i split up podcasts all the time i watch yeah, two hour too. two hour podcasts too and i'll make 30 it takes minutes me two here or three and, days yeah. yeah but it's as long as yeah. if, if it interests me i i stick with it uh i mean look so, we're, we're saving we're saving lives i mean i mean like, you have to make a shirt with that when you were like i'm saving lives so when people will see you like what do you do can't you see? I'm saving lives. That's How a good do you idea. Do it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, put one, one too. I'm saving lives. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Wanna taste life? I'm saving lives. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you can mix it all on one shirt. <laughs> okay. As far as I go, you find me uh, at healingwithfoods.org or mihailatelekan.com. They both go in the same website. On Facebook, um, Healing with Food. I think it's Mihaela, Tele, Mihaela Telecans, Healing with Food. It's like a complicated yeah. one. Uh, Instagram, Mihaela Telecan. I have a book. By the way, this book, I will revise it at one point, but it's still, it's fundamental. Yeah. What you learn from this book is the fundamental understanding human metabolism, human digestion, how we get sick from the gut, the immune. What are carbs, fats, all of that is very basic, very fundamental. Some things like reading the fiber, I'm like, mm, I think I have to revise this one because I yeah. see things differently. It's you not evolved. that it's factually wrong. It's just yeah. how I would explain it at this point in time, which you already heard. So the book is a fabulous resource. And of course, I work, I mainly work with women. And I am putting together right now a free masterclass for women over 40 it's called oh, fabulous great. over 40. nice <laughs> why not that's right if you want to be fabulous at any if age, you want to know if you want to taste true. life if you want to taste life you go you're going to join that program <laughs> it's, it's just a, it's a class it's not even a pro or i'm, I'm actually still debating if i want to do like a week challenge or just one master class just yeah. to to hone in some some and non-negotiables if you want to be right. face life and be fabulous over 40. that's right <laughs> that's it taste life and be fabulous over 40. there it is that's awesome <laughs> thank you so much matt and thank to you. you all thank you that was great uh, tuning that was great in. today
we will see you next week. Wednesday, 11.30. See you next week. Yes, 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 yes. Let's see how do I first and from my end here stop live stream. And I'm going to stop recording too. Um,